Morocco is a country rich in history and heritage. In fact, it's a melting pot of African, Arab and European culture. Join us on the flight deck as we fly our Qatar Airways executive Bombardier Challenger 650 aircraft, pushing its range limit on this eight-hour journey from Dubai to Morocco's capital of commerce, Casablanca. During this edition of our SIM flight from the cockpit series, we'll be discussing various aviation topics relevant to our flight, and we'll show you a brief destination guide about this magnificent country, now the most visited on the continent. All right, so we just received our flight plan with the uh, dispatcher, Tyrone. Today's flight, uh, Quebec, Quebec Echo 256. It will be a Qatar executive flight on the 26th of August, 2024, taking us from Dubai International to Mohammed V International Airport in Casablanca. As you can see here, it's a flight operated by a Bombardier Challenger 650 with the registration marks Alpha 7 Charlie Echo Golf. We're going to be cruising at a Mach decimal 77 and uh, we're not going to be going much faster to conserve fuel as it's a very long flight if we had uh, cruised at a normal uh, speed of Mach decimal 82 or decimal 80 we wouldn't have enough fuel to make it all the way to Casablanca furthermore on the flight steps we have three flight steps we'll fly initially at flight level 340 climbing to 360 380 and ultimately to 400 or 40,000 feet. Our trip fuel is 16,869 pounds. We're going to be flying for 7 hours and 50 minutes, roughly to Casablanca. In addition to our alternates, our final reserves and our taxiing uh, allowances here in our alternate, we're expecting to load 19,852 pounds. So our alternate is the uh, capital of Morocco, Rabat, uh, Gulf Mike Mike Echo. It's only 23 minutes away. Our routing here will take us uh, from the uh, from Dubai in the Arabian Gulf. We'll be flying the uh, Sempa to Foxtrot departure onto uh, the Bahrain Flight Information Region. We'll be flying over the northern uh, side of Saudi Arabia and then just to the uh, south of the uh, Gulf of Aqaba here, over the Sinai, over Cairo, Alexandria, and then we'll uh, enter very briefly the uh, Greek flight information region. Thereafter, we're going to be flying over Malta, the Maltese flight information region. In fact, we'll fly almost directly over the island of Malta, onto Tunisia, Algeria, northern Algeria, northern Morocco, over the uh, Atlas mountain range, and finally descending to Casablanca. So we're departing around 12 o'clock, uh, 12 p.m. local. We'll be off the ground by 12.12. We'll be landing in Casablanca at 5.30 in the afternoon. And we expect uh, 10 minutes of taxiing time. We have four passengers on board, including one executive cabin crew. We have very minimal cargo, payload of 900 pounds. And our takeoff weight here will be 47.7. Uh, which is uh, just a little bit shy of the maximum takeoff weight. And we expect a landing weight of 30.9 thousand pounds. 
We expect a minimum off-road altitude of 9,800 feet at Babur. You can see here uh, at every fix along the route where we have uh, expected fuel burn and the uh, the actual fuel burn will be recording these uh, during the flight and would we'll be monitoring our fuel flow and fuel consumption uh, regularly we have the saudi or jeddah fir we also have the cairo fir in egypt onto uh, greece malta onto tunis fir algiers fir and finally to casablanca so regarding our weather for departure here in Dubai, we have uh, we're expecting some uh, you know mild winds, 15 knots, uh, 280 gusting to 26 knots, uh, no clouds or anything. We have a very high temperature of 41 degrees. We're going to be checking the aircraft when we board that it's going to be uh, cooled very rapidly for our incoming passengers. As far as uh, Casablanca is concerned, we also have uh, a very sunny day. 28 degrees, uh, 7 knots at 320 degrees for the winds. And our alternate is also looking good. We have a bit of clouds scattered at uh, 9,000 feet, uh, visibility more than uh, 10 kilometers, and we have some variable winds uh, at 4 knots. All right, let's check with the uh, first officer outside who's uh, doing the external checks, and we'll come back to complete our planning inside the FBO. Dubai International Airport Arrival Charlie, at time 1200 Zulu, expect ILS approaches. Welcome back everyone. As far as the uh, notice to airmen or NOTAMs, so what we're doing here is we're gonna we're gonna be summarizing them just to show you the uh, relevant ones to our flight plan. So the first one is uh, Dubai International. We have a few taxiways that are, that are closed or sections of some taxiways that are closed. The second one is a very interesting one in the Bahrain region. There's uh, some GPS spoofing going on. So that's a hazardous thing that we have to watch out for. Perhaps we might lose periodically a GPS signal. There is a risk of that. So we just have to be careful in reporting anything out of the ordinary to the to the relevant air traffic service and in, in case we lose gnss completely we'll have to navigate uh, using our inertial reference system and we have a section of this later on during the flight jeddah 
Greece, Tunis, and Algiers. They have various uh, restriction zones, uh, flight plan, buffer zones, and so on. So we're going to be also presenting another piece during the flight about, you know, what are these zones? How can we avoid them? Are they referenced on uh, navigational charts or flight planning uh, charts and so on? So we'll present that to you for your interest. In Casablanca, we have to be wary of uh, some intense aerial activity up to flight level 240. And flying over the city is absolutely forbidden. So we have to be careful of not flying above Casablanca below flight level 200. Finally, for the, for the destination, the Poppy 435 left is unserviceable. So we just have to uh, rely on our vertical guidance for the glide slope. As for the alternate airport, there's reports of some bird activities in the vicinity of the aerodrome. So we just have to be also careful in case we divert, need an update about the, uh, the bird situation on the runway. For the weather, let's just quickly review the, the weather situation uh, along the route. As you can see here from, uh, from Simbrief weather uh, function, we can have a look at the uh, SIGMET reports along the way, you know, in case of uh, heavy turbulence or any other hazardous uh, weather incidents along the route. This is clear, there's, there's none of them along our route. We can have a look at the weather radar. You can also see it's quite a sunny day for the whole eight hour trip. You know, it's, it is the summer season in the Northern Hemisphere now, so um, there's not a lot of precipitation going on. Maybe just a few near Portugal, north of our destination. We can also check the wind barbs. As you can see here, there's not a lot of wind as well. Maybe a case of 10 or 20 uh, knot headwind for most of the route at our cruise level. Okay, so this completes the uh, flight plan review here with the dispatcher. Let's go outside here and uh, get the aircraft prepared. Dubai uh, delivery, good morning. Purex 256 at stand Echo 32 with information Echo. Requesting clearance to Casablanca. Q-Rex 32, hello, clearances to Casablanca, Semper 2 Fox, trot off 30 right, initial climb altitude 4,000 feet, school 0503, QNH 997 hectopascal. Clear the Semper 2 Fox, trot departure, initial altitude 4,000 feet, squawk 0503, QNH 997, Q-Rex 256. Q-Rex 256, correct. Boarding complete. We've been cleared to taxi to uh, holding point November 10 for runway 30 right. Guided by 343 Dubai, taxi Papa November, holding point November 930 right. 3 November, holding point November 930 right. This is going to be During takeoff and landing, seat belts must be secured, worn low and tight across your hips. If the seats are equipped with a shoulder harness, and cross-checked. Clear for takeoff, runway 30 right, QREX 256. OK, 
Okay, take off. Thrust set. Airspeed alive. Check. Eighty knots and cross checked. Check. Okay, we're flying uh, through flight level 200. Everything is going well. We'll be discussing uh, shortly the uh, fuel consumption and the fuel forecast uh, throughout the flight. Okay, you'll notice here the uh, forecasted remaining fuel in Casablanca is around 1,500 uh, pounds instead of the forecasted 2,800 in the flight plan. And the reason is because the FMS thinks we're going to continue all the way to Casablanca at our f current flight level, which is not true because we're planning some step climbs, I believe three of those. So had we not uh, further climbed, we would probably be expecting only 1,550 pounds when we arrive. You can see here by uh, pressing the position report uh, button on the FMS, we can get detailed information about the waypoints that we're flying to. You'll also find at the bottom time aloft, so we've been flying for 1 hour 53 minutes and we're expecting around another 5 hours and 49 minutes. Jeddah Center, uh, QRX 256, 20 nautical miles inbound to Kitot. Uh, we're reporting significant uh, GNSS anomalies, continuing using the inertial reference system. 
Curex 256 copied continue on navigation QRX 256, you are leaving Jeddah airspace, radar service is terminated, contact Cairo control, 127.7, Masalama. Contact uh, Cairo control on 127.70, Masalama. QRX 256, so let's check uh, since the uh, GNS system is uh, not working, we're going to be basically uh, just making sure our redundancies are. So the uh, inertial reference system should be working and our uh, VOR DME capability. You can see here we're pulling up uh, Sharm el-Sheikh VOR, which is in southern Sinai, Sierra Hotel Mango. So we're just gonna we're gonna we're gonna insert this fix into the the FMS, and we're gonna get a basically a uh, including the uh, frequency. 114.20 you can see here it's 62.1 nautical miles away and it's um, more or less to the south we're going to compare that with the uh, IRS reading which is 61.9 nautical miles away and also to the south of course 177 uh, degrees so uh, we know that uh, both redundant systems, the IRS and our VOR DME system is working normally. So we can go ahead and proceed with our flight. We're going to pull up this uh, map here on our uh, electronic flight bag. You can see this is today's uh, GPS jamming map. It shows the extent of GPS jamming from uh, low, which is the green areas, all the way to the red, which is uh, quite high. So you can see those are uh, in globally, they're pretty much centered on the Middle East right now and the Ukraine uh, war zone, so the Black Sea. Northern Turkey, you know, Eastern Europe, uh, the Eastern Mediterranean, the Levant region, and especially, you know, the areas around uh, Jordan and, uh, and Sinai. So we're flying through this uh, region today. It's no surprise, you know, we were expecting this, and we have contingencies that we'll discuss shortly. And we want to give you an overview about what is GPS jamming and what is this GPS spoofing that we're hearing about. So imagine we're flying along and our GPS signal pretty much goes uh, abnormal or it goes haywire. Someone or a state uh, player or uh, some kind of sinister uh, party, they try to block or interfere with our GPS signal, blocking our ability to use it to uh, navigate. It's basically like trying to uh, listen to our favorite radio radio station and, and have someone blast static over it. It's messy, you know, it can interfere with our position, our speed, even our route. So this is definitely something that we want to watch out for for uh, mid-flight, and this is something that we're trained to handle, especially that we have a sophisticated uh, navigational systems and redundancies here. Now let's talk about GPS spoofing. This is a bit sneakier, you know. Spoofing is really when someone sends a fake GPS signal to trick our aircraft systems into thinking we're somewhere we're not supposed to be. So picture this, you know, we're flying over the ocean or sea, and suddenly our GPS says that we're on some runway in a city that's an hour away. It can lead to some serious confusion. We could be flying at cruise level and hear this. Terrain, terrain, pull up, pull up. Although we're flying at 38,000 feet or something. So whether it's jamming or spoofing, they both can create three problems for us. But uh, as I said, you know, the aircraft and all most modern aircraft, uh, 
including this Bombardier uh, Challenger 650, it's equipped with backup systems and redundancies. So we have an onboard uh, inertial reference system in addition to VOR DME capability for navigating through uh, standard nav aids. Okay, it's time for our second uh, step climb. We're at flight level uh, 360. Let's go ahead and uh, climb to 380. You can see right uh, underneath us the River Nile. That's what's called the uh, the lifeline of Egypt, basically. We're passing now Charlie Victor Oscar or Cairo. You'll find here, the, for example, as we pass the city of Cairo on the horizons, you'll notice pure desert, while the uh, areas just adjacent to the River Nile is completely lush, as Egypt has been completely dependent on it for generations. We also just passed the city of Alexandria. The next few hours will be over the Mediterranean Sea. Okay, let's have a look at the uh, MFD here of the first officer. You can see here on this map there's uh, plenty of uh, lines and uh, plenty of uh, restriction zones we discussed earlier in the uh, FBO. So we'd like to give you an overview of what these are, you know, uh, areas of interest and things to watch out for when we're flight planning. everyone so uh, we pulled uh, up the uh, Navigraph charts we can see here our route from Dubai all the way to Casablanca so earlier when we were reviewing the uh, the NOTAMs we noticed there is plenty of references to all sorts of danger zones restricted airspace flight plan buffer zones as they call them and uh, other areas that are of a uh, temporary nature. So you could have a flood information region or uh, some kind of aviation authority publish a flight restriction uh, in a certain geographical location. All right, so I'm gonna show you here um, what are these zones and how can we avoid them? And is our same brief flight plan making sure to avoid these uh, restriction zones? So I'm gonna zoom in here. I'm gonna remove the uh, waypoints layer we'll just keep the uh, airspace layer here active let's zoom into greece the hellas upper information region or the athens flight information region check this out so you can see plenty of all kinds of uh, geometries here don't be scared so uh, the green ones are is just the uh, the, the the boundary between uh, flight information regions or upper information regions if you zoom in here, you'll also find dark uh, dotted line. That's like a kind of a uh, dark red color. This is uh, most likely the uh, terminal control areas, TMAs around busy airports. If you look here on this area, you'll find the uh, kind of a pinkish lines or uh, very light red. These are the uh, what we call the restriction air zones or flight information uh, buffer zones and so on. So let's go ahead and find out what these are. You know, all it takes is you have to right click your mouse. That's going to get you a pop up location here with, a, with a, your, your location indicated in terms of uh, GPS location. And then you'll be listed here with all of the uh, airspaces in terms of hierarchy. So the upper information region, that's the Hellas UIR. You'll find here listed three temporary flight plan buffer zones, right? So if you want to know 
what are they? Let's, let's segregate them. Let's look at each one individually. All you have to do is press the I here for the information. That will immediately highlight the subject area. So this flight plan buffer zone has an identifier. It's shown here. You'll find that the, uh, the restriction uh, constraints is from the ground. So the lower limit is from the ground or the, the mean sea level. And it goes all the way to flight level 515. So you can see this is a really wide uh, restriction. But you have to notice that th the type of it is danger. It's not, it, you're not being prohibited from entering this region. It just tells you you have to be, uh, you know, vigilant. You have to be uh, watching for any kind of dangerous activity going on around you. You know, and this danger, it could be anything from military exercises, and that's uh, active. So you, you might have some military firing, ground-to-ground -ground, uh, missiles or, or kind of uh, firepower. You could have a ground-to-air or, or air-to-ground and so on. Right? So this is not a prohibition. You can still fly in this region, but you have to be careful. Okay, so we'll just click back. Let's look at the, the middle one here, the temporary flight plan buffer zone. And that has the identifier from the ground all the way to flight level 335. Let's click I. You can see this is a bit of a narrower uh, region, but uh, it still has a danger restriction. So it's probably another military zone or something or uh, training exercise. We'll click back, we'll click the last one. I think that's even smaller, but you get an idea of, you know, ground to flight, but flight level 320, there is, there is something going on, all right? So you have to be vigilant crossing these. If you go here to the, to the right, you know, there's a funny one looking here. You, all you have to do is click inside, right click inside this uh, restriction zone. And again, you'll have more information about what's going on here, apart from the, the FIR indicated and the UIR. You have the uh, Aspro Neri Zero Danger Zone. So we, let's click it. You can find here the lower limit is mean sea level all the way to flight uh, level 250. It's another probably um, exercise, the military exercise zone. So Greece is pretty active. There's a lot of things. Uh, this is our route, by the way. So we'll just briefly uh, traverse the, uh, the Greek uh, flight information region or the Athens region from the metro a waypoint all the way to Arlos. I think that's around the 100 miles, if I'm not mistaken. All right. So you can see here we're entering this region, but if you right click here, you'll find that when we're at flight level 340, which we're expecting, we're going to be higher than the, uh, the, the upper limit of the restriction zone. So we have two uh, buffer zones here, and the upper limit is 285, and the other one is 280. So we're safe. There's nothing to worry about, all right? Yeah, so if, you ever, if you're ever flying and, uh, and you have some time on your hand, just look around you. I mean, look, at, look around, assess these uh, restriction zones. Just make sure that uh, nothing is impacting your flight. Look at here, this Tunisia area. We have plenty, plenty of areas. You know, we're overflying the Paran uh, waypoint here, for example. Let's right click. You have these, uh, if I'm not mistaken, there is no buffer zone or there's no restriction here. But if you click, for, for example, this square here, you'll find a military airspace. All right, uh, we're in Maltese uh, airspace now. We entered around 10 minutes ago at Arlos. And as you can see here on the multifunctional display on the nav status, the next waypoint is uh, expected in one hour and 11 minutes, around 541 nautical miles away. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce you to our executive cabin crew, Sukaina, who hails from Morocco. She'll introduce you to her beautiful country. Thank you, Captain. It's my pleasure to present to you Global Flyer's destination guide to my lovely home country of Morocco.
Morocco is located in North Africa, bordered by both the Atlantic Ocean and the Mediterranean Sea. It boasts a lot of diverse geographical features, like the Atlas Mountain Range, coastal green plains, and also deserts. With a population of around 36 million people, it is home to a mix of Arab, Amazigh, also known as Berber, and other ethnic groups, all making it a truly rich cultural tapestry. The Global Flyer recommended travel itinerary starts in the commercial capital of Casablanca, going south by train to the world famous historical town of Marrakesh. From there, we go north by high speed or TGV train to the captivated city of Tangier, where the Med meets the Atlantic. It is a blend of culture and stunning beaches. We continue into the Reefs Mountain for the rest to the charming blue city of Shafshawi to get lost in the picturesque streets. Then we travel south to the Asian city of Fez to discover its various UNESCO World Heritage Sites. Finally, we finish our circuit in Casablanca by visiting some impressive landmarks there. I'm going to give you now a brief overview of each of these locations and why it is so worth it to discover their mesmerizing attractions. First, you surely heard of Marrakesh. Many call it the Red City for its distinctive art buildings. I really think it's a vibrant tapestry of history, culture, and sincere experiences that attract travelers from the whole world. If you wander through the narrow alleys of the Medina, you discover a treasure trove of artisan shops selling intricate handicrafts, colorful textile, fragrant spices, and herbs. Marrakesh's rich history is reflected in its stunning architecture from the beautiful Bahia Palace, Kutubiya Mosque, and Saidin tombs. There is plenty of flash gardens like the world famous Jardin Majorelle, once owned by designer Yves Saint Laurent. You'll find vibrant plants and charcoal pathway providing a truly peaceful escape. The city promises an unforgettable journey filled with exploration, discovery, and a taste of Morocco's rich heritage. Moving to the northern city of Tangier, it is located at the crossroad of Europe and Africa where the Atlantic Ocean connects to the Mediterranean Sea. Known for its rich history and diverse cultural influences, Tangier has been a melting pot of civilization, attracting artists, writers and explorers for centuries. You will find a sunny Medina with narrow winding streets lined with nice shops, cafes and traditional Moroccan architecture, inviting visitors to immerse themselves in its unique charm. Tangier's unique coastline features beautiful beaches, perfect for sunbathing or enjoying water spots, while the Nurby Cliffs provide a breathtaking view of this ocean. Don't miss the iconic Caspar or Citadel, where you can explore the historic fortress and enjoy a panoramic view of the city and harbour. Shafshawan, often referred to as the Blue City because of its blue washed building. It's a hidden gem nestled in the reef mountains of Morocco in the Atlas. It is very charming and it was found in the 15th age century, boasting a blend of indigenous Berber and Arab influences, creating a rich cultural tapestry that reflects in its architecture and local traditions. Wander in its narrow winding alleys, you'll be greeted by the sight of vibrant markets premium with handmade crafts, textile and traditional pottery. The town has a relaxed atmosphere, encouraging you to explore. You'll find cozy cafes and rooftop terraces offering breathtaking view of the surrounding mountains. Nature lovers, you'll love stunning landscape, including hiking trails that lead to the picturesque actual waterfalls, Talismatan National Park. Locals are very hospitable, making you feel right at home. Our next stop is Fez, one of Morocco's oldest cities. It is a mesmerizing blend of history, culture, and craftsmanship that captivated every traveler. Renowned for its well-preserved medieval architecture, the city is home to the world's oldest university, al qarabiyyin and al Labyrinth Medina, that feels like stepping back in time. As you wander through its narrow, winding streets, you discover vibrant souks filled with intricate handicrafts, colorful ceramics, and exquisite textile showcasing the rich artisanal heritage of the region. Fez is also famous for its stunning tanneries, where traditional leather-making techniques have been passed down for generations. The aroma of spices and the sounds of daily life create an immersive experience that engages all your senses. Don't miss the breathtaking view from the surrounding hills, where the city's skyline is adorned with minarets and Asian walls. Fez offers an unforgettable journey into Morocco's soul, making it a must-visit destination for any travel seeking to experience the essence of Morocco. 
we move to the alpine style little town of Ifran, also referred to as Little Switzerland. It's a picturesque town nestled in the middle atlas region of Morocco, known for its alpine architecture and pristine natural beauty. It is surrounded by lush forests and serene lakes. It offers a refreshing escape with opportunities for hiking, skiing and enjoying the great outdoors. It's an ideal destination for travelers seeking tranquility and a touch of European charm in Morocco. We finish our tour in the biggest city of Morocco, Casablanca. Its biggest landmark is the stunning Mohassan II Mosque, one of the largest mosques in the world, which features breathtaking architecture and a seaside location. Other attractions include the Royal Palace, the vibrant Corniche waterfront, and the historic Habus Quarter, showcasing a blend of modernity and tradition. The name Casablanca, meaning White House in Spanish, was derived from the whitewashed buildings that characterized the city when it was first established by the Portuguese in the 15th age century. Our Moroccan cuisine is a tantalizing fusion of flavors, colors, and aromas that reflects the country's rich cultural heritage, renowned for its use of spices like cumin, coriander, and saffron. Each dish tells a story of tradition and warmth. The iconic tagine, which you have probably heard of, is a slow-cooked stew often made with tender meats, vegetables, and dried fruits. It showcases the art of slow cooking and is a must try for any visitor. Couscous, a staple grain, is typically served with savory stew and it's delightful side to many Moroccan meals. Street food lovers will revel in the vibrant markets where they can savor delicious snacks like crispy pasillas and spicy kebabs. Don't forget to indulge in sweet mint tea, a sample of hospitality served in ornate glasses. With its diverse influences and rich flavors, Moroccan cuisine offers a culinary adventure that is sure to leave a lasting impression on every traveler. Morocco offers a wealth of adventure activities for thrill seekers. You can trek in the Atlas Mountain to experience Berber culture or embark on Sahara Desert adventure on Camel Trek sunbathing or stargazing under the vast night sky. Surfing and kite surfing are popular in coastal towns like Asawira and Agadir in the south of the country, while the rugged terrain of the reef mountains offers excellent hiking and rock climbing opportunities. You can also enjoy other unique experiences like paragliding over a sunny landscape or explore the gorgeous Dutodra. With its diverse landscapes and rich culture, Morocco is a paradise for adventure seekers. Al Maghreb or Morocco in Arabic means the land of the West or the land of the sunset. Morocco's monarchy is one of the oldest in the world, tracing its lineage back over a millennium to the Idrisi dynasty found in the 8th age century. Unique at its blend of tradition, authority, and modern governance, the Moroccan monarchy maintains a deep connection to Islam, with its king also serving as what is called commander of the faithful which reinforce its historical and religious significance in Moroccan society. Thank you for joining me on this journey to Morocco. I hope this guide inspires you to explore my beautiful country and experience its magic for yourself. Thank you for flying with us. And if you've been to Morocco or planning to visit, please leave us a comment and don't forget to subscribe to our Global Flyer channel. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sukaina. That's uh, really been uh, great. I want to express my uh, gratitude to you for your incredible contribution in this video. Your insights and your passion for uh, your native country, Morocco, is truly uh, appreciated. Thank you for sharing your knowledge and helping us uh, bring this project to life. I hope you enjoyed this destination guide. If you've been to Morocco or if you're planning a trip, leave us a comment and let us know how that went or what you're looking forward to the most. And do like and subscribe to the channel.
Okay, we're just about to leave the uh, Malta flight information region here and enter into Tunisia at uh, Sorab Fix. We have around 2 hours and 18 minutes left, just over a thousand nautical miles to go to Casablanca. <laughs> All right, we're running another fuel check here over Tunisia. You can see here in our flight plan, we're uh, noting down our uh, fuel status at every waypoint. So for example, at Sorab in Tunisia, we're supposed to have on board around 6.8 thousand pounds of fuel. We currently have 6,400. It seems that uh, we've burned a bit more fuel en route uh, due to uh, wind conditions, slightly higher uh, headwinds. But we are calculating that we should be fine in Casablanca. We're still quite legal. We have enough fuel to last us uh, all the way to our alternate at Rabat, including uh, contingencies and final reserves. Okay, finally, uh, for today's flight, we want to just show you, you know, a bit of an overview on the en route terminal and navigational charges that uh, such a flight would incur. Of course, we discussed here, we're traversing nine flight information regions. We have a departure airfield and an arrival airfield. You can see here, for example, in Dubai airport, we have a uh, prefix charges related to a departure, fire coverage, and the, uh, an en route navigational charge to exit the uh, FIR. Some countries also uh, charge a fixed charge, while some others will charge a uh, the formula that involves three factors. So we have the unit rate, which is uh, usually per nautical mile. You have the distance factor, which is usually the uh, great circle distance between the point of entry and the point of exit in that FIR, divided by 100, times the weight factor, which is basically the square root of the maximum takeoff weight in metric tons divided by 50. So we multiply these three factors and we get a, the final uh, charge. So basically in today's flight, we've incurred around 1,135 euros. Okay, this wraps up the navigational and terminal charges that we could have incurred in a real life situation. If you'd like me to uh, touch on another subject, any other uh, operational costs, let me know, leave a comment, and we'll explore that in the next video. finally reached Morocco. We're at the Wajda VOR, or Oscar Julia Delta. That's really at the northeastern corner of the country. Okay, so as we're about to descend soon, let's get our uh, arrival weather. We'll use our data link to get the arrival weather for Casablanca. Okay, well, uh, let's enter the, uh, the approach references here, all the data, the arrival weather, the winds, the outside air temperature, the Q&H. It will be a uh, dry uh, runway condition. We're expecting a uh, landing weight of 30.8. And let's go ahead and send the V speeds. Okay, we're about to engage the VNAV. 
So for the VNAV to work, we have to set the, uh, the lowest altitude we expect the, uh, the autopilot to reach, which is just uh, before the uh, final approach fix into Casablanca. So it will be 3,600 feet. And we'll just go ahead and uh, press the VNAV button here. And we'll just monitor the aircraft being descended by the autopilot. some uh, congestion uh, arriving in Casablanca so we've just been uh, informed to uh, to hold at Kotag fix so we'll just go ahead and program that in the FMS Control. Uh, good morning, sir. This is the Maroc uh, 459. Uh, Astrable uh, 200 at uh, Duras intersection over uh, FIS. Okay, let's review the in range checklist, please. Avionics set. And one target. Nine one point zero. Okay, cast clear. And range checklist complete. After contact, we will maintain present heading, rate of vectors, minus 3, 5 left, when we'll set up all. Ryanair, Porto, Moscow 3, that is not in a row. Let's go into the FMS and cancel the contact hold here, as ATC just cancelled it. Okay, we're lining up with the localizer to Casablanca runway 35 left. minimums.
minimums. Continue. 100. Fifty, forty, thirty, twenty, ten. Pointers, not reversers. Descent. Okay, engine shutdown checklist off parking set. Off. Generator one off. Generator two off. Shut down. Stand by. Okay, yeah, let's get the trucks in. Okay, seat belts off. Let's uh, say goodbye to our passengers. Thank you for flying with us. Hope you enjoyed your flight. Looking forward to see you again. Thank you. Okay, we hope you enjoyed today's flight. I'd like to thank you for being with us today, myself, the first officer, and Sukaina. We look forward to having you with us on another journey. And in case you're not subscribed, please go ahead, do like, and leave a comment.